Just horrific. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. Kelly Olynyk, or sorry, Lowry Markkinen has 24 points at halftime and 30. So he scores another six whole points in the third quarter. And you guessed it, another two points in the fourth quarter. Could have had a career night, and the Jazz literally just cannot get him the ball in the second half. Makes absolutely zero sense to me. He's your best player. Uh, was on pace for a career night. I I mean, he could have easily scored a 50-piece, but the Jazz don't have a play to just get him the ball. You know, on the low block, it would be nice to get him the ball, on the outside, it'd be nice to get him the ball and maybe let him go ISO a couple times. But uh, to me, I, I truly believe the rotation is off. Um, I believe Olenek and Markkinen should not be playing together a majority of the time, and they are. I think it it they both like to play on the perimeter for the most part. And uh, as you saw in that last play, Lowry switches on to... Uh, DeRozan and he doesn't score, but then Olenek can't box out Vucevic, um, gets second chance points. And so even if, if DeRozan does miss, you're relying on Olenek out rebounding a big, um, and it, it just, it's not going to happen. Like, he, maybe he boxes him out. He he boxed him out that one time, and then Vucevic touched it out of bounds. That's the one time we got it. Um, So, down the stretch, I just don't get the Olenek and Markkinen. Uh, I, I just don't get not having any rebounds. If you're going to have Markkinen go guard DeRozan on, on the perimeter, then there's an, one less rebound, one less rebounder. So, you're relying on Colin Sexton, Jordan Clarkson, and Beasley to get you a rebound. Oh, the second half just did not feel anything like the first half, um, which to me, the only logical thing that can make sense is we're tanking now. And Kevin, I know this will make you happy because you've been on that boat, but it literally feels like we are tanking now. Kessler doesn't play in the second half. As a Buki, I believe gets more minutes than Kessler. Yeah, Kessler gets five minutes. As a Buki gets nine minutes, which he hasn't played freaking all year. Um, and as a Buki actually played decently. Um, Jazz have 14 turnovers. It, it it was just a mess, man. That second half was a complete mess. So I've got Armani here. I know what he's gonna say. Give Lowry the damn ball, which I can't agree more with, uh, and Kevin. So I'm going to let Kevin go first and then Armani, uh, go ahead, Kevin. You there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. I, dude, I, I don't know what's going on with Hardy. Like, I don't want to believe that he's trying to tank, but. I'm having a hard time seeing anything else. Yeah, I think I think the tank's full on. Like I, that whole second half didn't make sense. <laughs> you, know, you know I'm you know I'm all about the tank. Yeah, but at the same time, like I want the game to be competitive. Um, I do think we're hampered a little bit by Marketing's knee. He didn't take the ball inside at all. He just wanted to sit on the perimeter, roll out of screens, and take jump shots, which is fine by me. Um, but he got cold in the second half. Um, oddly enough, Olenek was our best shooter in the game. Like he was hitting his, eh, he was hitting his shots. It's just it's hard to win when Clarkson can't get it going too. It's so hard when he can't hit a shot. 
because then he starts thinking he can become a passer. And I feel like it completely changes our game when he's not looking for a shot and he's looking for the pass. I know that sounds weird to say it, but it just doesn't flow right. Yeah, I agree. I think there's points in every game where we just become comfortable sitting out. Oh, here's Hardy. So let's hear this genius. Hopefully he just rips him, but I, I doubt it. Hang on. Yeah, we know how we need to play. Um, we know how we play when we're playing at our best and we're a good team when we play the way we're supposed to. And it's just about us doing that for more than 48 minutes. We have times where we're really locked in defensively and physical and rebounding as a team. Um, and then we drift away from it for a brief period. And then we have times where we're really moving the ball and our spacing's great. And then we drift away from that for a period. So it's about the group sticking together, um, staying focused on, you know, what we can control. There are going to be nights, you know, where free throw shooting is not great. There's going to be times where you turn the ball over at, um, you know, a tough time. And that's just part of the game. But there is a lot of the game that we do control um, our approach, our mental focus. And that's what we have to focus on, you know, as we move into this next stretch of home games. Is there something that's derailing that focus? I don't think there's any one thing that's getting in the way. Um, you know, I think we just have to to stick to what we're doing. I think everybody on our team has very good intent. I think everybody wants to win. I think at times when the game gets tough, things aren't going your way, um, you can go into, you know, your default mode. And um, sometimes that's when we play a little bit too much isolation. The ball doesn't move around as much. And you know, that's natural. So we just have to continue to emphasize the way that we play as a team. Um, we have to continue to emphasize rebounding as a team, which I think for a lot of the game we did well. Um, you know, some of the plays in the first half, Drummond got a couple tips that he got credited for, and we ended up coming up with the rebound. But, um, you, know, you know, it just has to be a full 48 minutes of that focus because for our team, you know, especially in those areas, um, we can't drift away from it because we need everybody to be locked in um, in all those areas. Was going with Doak uh, over Walker in those stretches, was that just because Drummond is more kind of like a traditional big body center? Or? Yeah, I like Doak's physicality. Um, you know, Walker has done a lot of things very well, and I thought in that first, uh, his first run, I thought that Drummond's physicality bothered him a little bit. Um, you know, I thought Doak would give us a good presence. I was actually really happy with how he played. He uh, rebounded well, set good screens. Um, I, I was really happy for Doak. Again, it's not easy having not played much at all this season to be thrown in the middle of that game um, against a team like that. So um, really happy for Doak um, that he stayed ready and performed the way he did. Um, his physicality, I thought, was what we needed at that moment. Did you guys get away from him? You know, some of the stuff that you were doing earlier in the game, you know, in the third quarter, particularly when they made their run and, and kind of uh, caught you guys a little bit. Yeah, I think, you know, we we are, at least going into tonight, we're the, the best off-ball offense in the NBA. And I thought that in that third quarter, we got away from that a little bit, played a little bit too much pick and roll. Um, the ball got a little bit stagnant. I thought that, um, you know, we really just lacked the necessary energy on both ends of the court. Um, we're at our best when we're flying around on both sides of the ball. Um, and I didn't think we had that in that third quarter. Coach, you've been extended homestead here. What's your plan for practice? I know that's been hard to get practice in. Yeah, I mean, we're going to be practicing on these days, um, you know, in between the games. But our main focus right now is getting our legs back underneath us. Everybody getting to, you know, get some sleep get some recovery with our medical team. Um, it's uh, it's great that we're not leaving on a plane tomorrow, which has been kind of the feeling here lately that we play a home game and then we're right on to a plane. So I think it'll be nice for everybody to wake up tomorrow and just be able to come to the gym um, without a bag packed. What do you say about Lowry's game today? Uh, Lowry was, was very good, um, especially in the first half. I think, you know, because we play 
an equal opportunity style when we're flowing up and down. I think that's an area where, as a team, we have to do a better job of recognizing when somebody really has it going. Um, he's drawing a lot of attention from defenses now. That hasn't slowed his production that much. Um, but I think you know he's a really good player, very versatile. But I really do think that there are moments of the game where it feels like we forget that he has 30 points. Um, I love when we move the ball around. I love that everybody is aggressive, but I do think there's moments where we can recognize the hot hand a little bit better. Um, but overall, I think Lowry did a great job, um, you know, mixing up his game. Obviously, his three ball was falling tonight, which uh, made it all seem good. Earlier in the season, you said that you you never were going to get mad at someone for missing their free throws, mm -hmm. but I think under 40% is... Right at 40. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, um, right at 40. Make it sound good. I mean, I'll ask him, but I don't think that any of them were trying to miss. So okay. it's hard to – I don't really know what I would say. Yeah. You know, damn it, you should make them. You know, that. <laughs> that, that seems like it would just be uh, wasted time for myself and the players. Um, they work on free throws a lot. It's pretty uh, – you know, we've had a couple of these games this year where it's not bad. It's, like, way bad. Yeah. Um, that's just – that's life in basketball, I guess. Um, but, yeah, I'm not – I trust that all of our guys are walking up to the free throw line with the intent to make them. Okay. Kalen's had a couple of over five, one for five kind of nights in the last few. And I'm just kind of curious if you've seen any through, you know, whatever uh, with – Good games compared to bad games with him, or you know, what are you telling him at this time? Yeah, I think you know, Taylor's in a tough role coming off the bench um, as a, a primary ball handler. Um, you know, I think recently his shot distribution has gone more towards three balls and less towards attacking. Um, I think Taylor's at his best when he's attacking the paint for himself or for his teammates. Um, I think his threes are sort of like the icing on the cake. Um, I'm not saying that he's not a good shooter. He's shown that he can make threes, but we have plenty of other guys on our team whose identity is a little bit more three-point shooting, and I think Taylor needs to you know, continue to, to use his strengths um, of attacking the paint first, and then the threes are kind of the secondary part of it. Um, that's something that stands out to me. Um, for the most part, I think the three balls that he's taken have been pretty good. Um, he's been pretty open, and he's just missed, but... Um, he has a real gift to get to get to the basket, get it, get himself in the paint. Um, I thought when he was, you know, he had those four or five really good games in a row. I thought that his his first instinct was to attack uh, the paint, and I think he's gotten away from that just a little bit. But you know, that could also be partly just the moments of the game that he's in and who he's playing with and the situations that he ends up with the ball. Um, so I'll watch the film tonight and see if there's anything I can do to help him, you know, put him in some better spots so he can use his, uh, his gifts. All three of these guys, Nikhil, Talon, Colin, a lot since Mike went out. And I know that obviously you don't want Mike hurt, but is it a silver lining that you're able to kind of experiment a little with them and get them more opportunities so you know what you have later on? Absolutely. I think there's the hardest part at this level is that you have 15 pro basketball players on your team and not all of them can play. They're all good players. They all, I mean, they wouldn't be here if they weren't. And so, you know, moments of the season where you have injuries, um, it gives you an opportunity to see other guys. It gives them an opportunity to show kind of what they've got and what they can bring to the table. So, um, I, like, I don't mean this in a bad way. I haven't thought about Mike once in the last three or four days just this is yeah, we have right, about dude. this group right now um, you haven't thought about much and i think yeah, all right. three of those guys have had good moments and tough moments um they're all still so young in their careers like they have so far to go um the, the ceilings on them you know we're not we're not sure what they are yet but i think it's uh it's been great to get to see all of them play extended minutes um it's very hard to play basketball in really short stretches. You get three and a half minutes, and by the time you start sweating, you get subbed out. Um, so I think it's been great to, to see all them kind of get into the flow of the game a little bit. Um, and they all have stuff that they can bring to the table for us.
Joined by Big T, Thurl Bailey, calling the game tonight uh, with Craig Bullerjack and uh, T. Uh, another tough loss for Utah. Lost it down the stretch, but let's jump back to the first half of this game. Where all right for me, it's it's time to start reading between the lines. Like, yeah, I I know like I know that Coach Hardy's supposed to say all these things, but. Oh my gosh, man. He's a horrible salesman, by the way. Yeah, it's just, it's like you haven't thought about Mike. You haven't thought about your best player being out. Come on. And as he was speaking, I'm just looking over at the box score and just like how me, me and Kevin were saying, like, this just, it doesn't make sense. And as he was speaking, uh, NBA Jazz fan wrote, I think fans are spent. They don't know whether we're trying to win or tank and to to me like i thought it was obvious last game to tonight i think it was more obvious that we're trying to lose games you look at Taylor horton tucker's minutes go down all of a sudden Nikhil alexander walker's playing 15 minutes a game uh azabuki who hasn't played is now out playing kessler makes zero sense um Vanderbilt, I don't even remember him playing in the fourth quarter, which he usually does. And then you finish the game with Olenek when you can't rebound. Um, I'm going to pass the mic over to somewhere, someone else. Armani, I know you were requesting that someone uh, approve him. Armani was, and I approved him, and then it was just staying connected the whole time. Okay. So Armani, can you – do you got the mic? So – Jordan, real fast. Oh, here. Yeah, go ahead, Kevin, and then I'll go to our money. Something Coach said, like, I, I mentioned this um, a couple a couple weeks back. Like, he doesn't play Kessler against big guys. He doesn't like to play him against the first team. And then he said in the interview, like, he thought that Kessler struggled a little bit, you know, was a little beat up by playing the bigger guy. Is, is there something wrong between Kessler's ears? Like, does he get butt hurt if he gets beat by bigger guys? And I don't mean that rude or whatnot, but like Hardy just really babies him a lot, and I don't know why. Yeah, really. he could, but like at this point, when if Azabuki is going to start playing over Kessler, I think that's doing more damage to Kessler than good. Like, it, I don't, I don't disagree with you, but 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 am I crazy for thinking like he protects him because like when you look at some of the games he's played over the last ten games. When their number one guy comes in, Kessler comes out. Like, doesn't let him play against the number one bigs. Let him play against the big guy. It blows my mind because Kessler should be able to handle that. And if he can't, he doesn't belong in the NBA. Yeah, I agree. And I think, I don't think Kessler is dumb by any means. I think he's actually really smart and is, and can learn quickly. Like, the, he got dunked a cup on a couple times and then came back with that big block. But I I don't know. Like the only thing that honestly makes sense to me is we're tanking now, or we're just throwing games. Um, Armani, I'm gonna go to you real quick. Hang on. Did he leave? No, I. Accept. Oh, here we this, go. This is very, very, very depressing watching this watching this team play. I'm I'm not gonna lie, it's depressing because it's like the way we give up leads makes no actual sense. It makes no basketball sense. You have Lowry who has 24 in the first half. Why is he barely touching the ball yeah. in the second half? I can hear this uh, his leg shit all day. Excuse my language, but I can hear this all day. That didn't stop him from running around. That didn't stop him from setting the screen and rolling, not getting the ball in a wide open paint. Two, two times where I've seen that. Playing um, 38 minutes. Playing 38 team. minutes. Right. How did you have somebody who played 38 minutes? Most of the shots came in the first half. Yeah, if he, he, he's yeah. shooting efficiently. He, he shot 66 percent from the field, 66 um, percent from the three. Why is he not getting the ball? Yeah, it, it's, not half, it's not that hard to. It's not that hard to get a seven foot or the ball either is a thing. It's so hard. it's like, what? Well, why do we not have a play where the someone's just isoed on one side with him and he's posting him up? Tell me, like I heard him say. Yeah, we have an equal, equal equal opportunity system. We need to figure out how to get somebody the ball. Why is that a problem? Well, and I actually thought that Hardy in the first half was trying to get him a 50-piece because he, he played him. He put him in again 
Like it, it's like he was getting extra minutes. Exactly. Yeah, it was. So he's doing what what I've been what I've been asking him. Like I've been asking of to happen. Well, when we was having a, when when the offense and everything was going great, and we still had Conley on the floor. That's what, this is kind of the rotations that not the rotations, but this is how I like I, I would have liked to see his minutes go because we give up a lot of the lead, you know, that we had uh, that we unusually get in the first quarter in the second quarter. Um, but uh, that's Clarkson, I mean I, I don't have much to say about Clarkson. Yeah, you know, he played man. bad tonight. If you're missing, he, if you're missing, you're missing. I can't like it's not like he took a lot of bad shots. He maybe took about like two two bad shots around the paint area, but that's whatever. It's like all right, cool. This is what he does, so I, I'm not gonna really because some because all the games I'll champion it when he's hitting, but I can't. It's like whatever with that. Um, Flexton was eh, eh. Yeah, seventeen. But it was, eh. See, I think I think collectively as a group. Everybody looked pretty good in the first half. Yeah, everybody looked solid. In the, yeah, yeah everybody and everything was, was clicking and, and like, yes. moving the ball. And then it was just, like, second half, like, collectively as a group. It was like, all right, guys, like, let's you stop doing it. When, when I seen Azabugi come to the court in the second, in the second half, I almost, like, my body <laughs> shut down. My body, my body shut down. I was like, yeah, we got to be tanking. We got to be tanking. Yeah, so so that's I mean the the Lowry not getting the ball is is like an obvious thing, right? Yeah, but the other the thing that stands out to me is like these minutes, the the, the yeah, rotations. Where like, whoa, whoa, whoa. why is Azabuki getting more double the minutes that Kessler is, and why is Alexander Walker now playing over Taylor Horton Tucker all of a sudden when these two guys were not getting minutes? Five games ago, you know what bothers me is that Vucevic is the exact type of center that that Walker should definitely be guarding. Yeah, like, we put him out in the game yeah. with his bigs who can uh, who can over dominate him. Cool, great, beautiful. So why why when we have a, a center in Vucevic who he doesn't get a high volume of touches, he's not going to bang in the paint that much when he go when he goes into the perimeter, Walker can guard the perimeter against him. It's perfect, like Kevin said. Perfect person for that Protect him for what? I don't know. I can't even find him Embiid. Dude, yeah. I think, you know what I think they're protecting him from? Being in a trade. <laughs> you know what, though? We've seen it this year. That great point, Mark. We, we've seen Kessler, Markadin, and Azubuki all play. So if they got the big guy in there, okay, put Donk in. Let him guard the big guy. And then let Kessler guard the four. Like we've seen him do it. Like if if, if that's what he wants, if he wants Book uh, Donk in there to get rebounds, because Donk was, was the only one boxing out all night long in his nine minutes, that's fine. But at least give Kessler a chance to guard the four. But for some reason, coach just protects him from getting hurt. He's afraid his feelings are going to get hurt or something. I don't know. Blows my mind. It pisses me off. I mean, the other thing that I'd come up with too is like maybe they're trying to make a trade with Conley and Gay, and exactly. maybe they believe in him so much that they don't want the league to see how good he is. But I, I mean, as long as he knows that, well, and maybe Doke is yeah. part of like a piece that because his contract will expire. So they're trying know. to pump up dope. My thing is, see, I, what I would say is, I, it would make sense that it, it looks like we're quote unquote tanking and we're playing messing. And Danny, for whatever reason, hasn't playing around with the minutes to make it. What would make sense is to show an impact that that Mike Conley has to boost up his. I, I don't know. I can, I can't make this make sense. Well, what are you boosting? <laughs> you, if, if, if the impact because, exactly. because 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 if it shows that he has a high impact on winning. Yeah, like, like exactly. when Chris he Paul. Conley is at this point in his career. Yeah, but, but that year that Chris business. Paul, that year that Chris exactly. Paul took the yeah, Oklahoma yeah. City Thunder yeah. to the playoffs, I think that like the the league was down on him, and I think the league yeah, might yeah, have the perception right. that Conley's on his way out, and if yeah, we can because, start yeah. losing these games, they can say, "Wow, Conley can actually run a team," and maybe he is more valuable than we thought, but. That's the. I mean, we're either tanking or behind the scenes, there's a trade going down, and we're trying to not include certain people or puff other people up, like 
uh, Doak. Like maybe a team is like, hey, we want to see Doak play. Uh, and that's why he got so minutes. I mean, I don't know. I, you know, I don't think like, like maybe uh, Walker it was getting traded the way he didn't come back in the game. Oh no, no, dude, no, they're not no, trading no, Walker. No. Kessler. We're not good. See, you know what? I did find that weird is that when they said, um, the report that Lowry and only Lowry and JC is untouchable. For one, I don't know how JC is untouchable. I love JC, love him. I don't know how he's untouchable. I think I don't think anyone's untouchable for the right How's thing. The court? But, uh, well, no, I don't think they, I don't think there's any circumstance that they let Lowry go. Like the, to me, the most solid ones would be Lowry, uh, probably Clarkson because he's been around and they see him as a piece with something. Uh, Malik Beasley and Kessler. That's that's about it. Yeah, that's only four. That's just the only. Yeah, that's about the only four that I would actually sit there and be like, yeah, no, we need to hold on to that. I don't even think Beasley's untouchable. I think he's one of our best trade chips. The way yeah, he, he could be. He could be. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a fifty-fifty. It's just like, all right, cool. Is it, like, is he like a a main core piece to a, to a championship team? Yes and no. What drives me nuts though is the cop out by Will Hardy to say that it was an equal opportunity, uh -huh. <laughs> and then they don't go to him not in the second half. Like the team <laughs> knew he was hot in the first half. That's why they kept feeding him. Listen, there's one thing that I said. I, I said during the thread, Colin Sexton, Colin Sexton is definitely the biggest hater on the team. He he has a habitual problem. <laughs> he has a habitual problem with giving people the ball when they're hot. Well, he he. I even tweeted out: Is Colin Sexton related to Patrick Beverly? Because like they have that same <laughs> insane mentality. Like they do one thing, and it's just like the greatest thing in the world. But then they forget the very next play to do what actually matters. Uh, yeah, or Orca, I want to hear a little bit more from you. Like, what what are your thoughts? Do you have any of these? I've been called a conspiracy theory uh, theorist lately because of these things. But I I I truly believe. I mean, the Jazz have been linked with Shams to uh, John Collins, so like obviously we're in trade talks. But what what's your take? Are we what are we doing here? Well, Kevin and I spent a whole show on this, <laughs> but I want to say that I, I I think maybe we're making a move to further the tanking process. I really don't think that we're <laughs> trading major pieces away to go for the playoffs. I think we're. But trying my to problem steady. with that is. What more tanking do we need to do when we have three first round picks? We can trade up all the way up to the fourth. Uh, yeah, pick. And, the, and with Cat going out today, the Timberwolves are screwed. And that yeah. Pick, oh, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, so now lie. maybe we like, have like two top choice. ten picks. I don't know. Well, we, well, we talked about. I was like, me and Dallin, we talked about this the other day. I, I don't know why, but I just got this feeling that he is going to move one of our picks. For multiple first round picks next year. Yeah, I totally see year. that. And 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 the easy way to do that is if we, I mean, best case scenario, we get two top ten picks with us and Minnesota. And he can move one of those for two first rounds the following year. I mean, I know that's a little bit of a stretch, but to your point, and I like to give you shit, Jordan. <laughs> but and, and I'm all about the tank, but. How can we be that good for that long and all of a sudden this bad? And and that's why like the conspiracy is so loud right now because nothing makes sense. Like even me who wants to lose every single game and get Wimby, I mean, did it? He's make having sense a hard that, time believing what's going on right now. Did it make sense that we this this team that we thought was going to originally tank just started? I didn't. I personally didn't feel like this team was going to be a tanking team. Looking at the rosters. Record, just it's natural talent. I didn't think it was just a taking team. Well, I think it was with 500 teams. Let, 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 me, let me update you on the standings because we're currently only a game ahead of the Minnesota Timberwolves and uh, we've only won 12 games. Like, so we could easily get the last place spot if we truly oh, wanted sure. to. These, these bottom teams right now have won five games. The next team, uh, San Antonio and Charlotte Hornets, have won six games. So, like, I mean, I don't know if it's developed these players in the first half and then just 
you know, the rotation didn't even make sense. I mean, you can, you could totally lose a game by just a rotation say, yeah, you know, yeah. like Hardy said, I, I don't know what you want me to go tell them to shoot better. I, like, I, yeah. I think uh, having two top 10 picks almost guarantees you like a top three pick. And so I was at the game tonight and I ended up taking my brother and between him and I, he and I both noticed one thing that I've been kind of thinking about for the past probably seven or eight games now, but it really stood out to me today. I think just because I was hyper-focused on the game, obviously. Wait, 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 Tevin. I just want to say welcome. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, the well, big thing, uh, Vando started to actually try, which was nice, but then he diverted very quickly back to his normal not giving a crap self. Um, but the bigger thing that I really want to point out is I, I feel like I'm just not on the Olympic train anymore. I thought he was a decent piece that would help keep us. I'm so far uh, off that you know, train. On the 500 ball, and I am. He did his. I think he set one good pick the entire night. Other than that, he was either complaining or he did wasn't setting good screens. I'm like. I'm I'm off this this train. It drives me nuts to that point. He where he gets the ball so bad of the three point arc, and he doesn't know what to do. Like he, yes, he's going to dribble and then has he looks, the and goes back and then goes back. And like irritates me. So, yes, he looks back and forth, going, "Okay, who's going to take the ball?" And it's like, well, <laughs> honestly, but they shouldn't have passed it to you in the first place. You're just kind of a fifth guy there to take it. And bro, in my and, opinion. Uh, him and Lowry together is so bad because they both yes. want to be on the perimeter. And if if you have Lowry and him in, it, it totally cramps up what Lowry's trying to do. Lowry needs the space to either be, go inside on a little guy, or if he has a bigger guy, go out, shoot the three, and then as the big guy comes out, be able to drive past him. But Olenek's too too slow to do any of that. And I just think I, it messes I, I up. I was shocked. I don't, when, I, don't he drove in, I can't remember who he drove in on, but when he drove in on whoever it was and got that, and well, I didn't even think he was going to get a foul call, honestly. But when he got that foul call, man, and one, I was like, well, <laughs> at least he get gets one highlight for the night. <laughs> yeah, cut it to three, and then that was it. Armani, you don't agree. Why? I don't agree that 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 Lowry and um, Olenek doesn't play good together. They play. They play uh, above above solid. It's, it's not bad. It's far from bad. You can't say it's bad. I think they need an actual big one to call with them. I do believe that. Hundred percent agree with you. That's what I was gonna say. Because Olenek oh, can play the four. We, yep. I, we've yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that, I'm career, just saying, so. like if you have if you have Lowry or Olenek in, the other one needs to be off the court. Or, I mean, unless Lowry plays the three and you have a big in with Olenek, like, I, and Lowry yeah, can play the three. I think, yeah, Lowry that's what Lowry three. plays. Lowry three. plays the three. Yeah. He plays the three and the four. That's what he, he plays the three and the four. He plays a lot of minutes at the four. When, um, I know, but when Olenek and Lowry are in, Olenek's the five and Lowry's the four. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah there's no, yeah, when, you when, know there's no would, um, Vanderbilt, yeah. When, when we went on that run in the end of the second, you had Olenek, Lowry, and donk all in the game, and the yeah, four spacing, the, the four four spacing was great. Yeah, it yeah, I, well. I'm okay with that. It was surprisingly good with with that lineup. Surprise! I I thought they were gonna run, and I'd love to see more to see if this works more. Um, Kelly Olynyk and Lori Markkinen pick and roll, just to see if Lori can really control that. Whether he t- does a step back type of thing or rolls with. Uh, Olenek and Olenek can just deliver like that. I think that might be interesting. The problem with L- Lowry and Olenek being your bigs is there's no rebounding. Like, because either one of them is shooting the ball outside and uh, on offense, one of them's going to have to guard on the outside as well. Or when they're, when we're on defense, but yeah, if you have Doak, uh, Vanderbilt or um, Kessler in with those two, 
and Lowry running the three, that's probably the only time it works in my mind. And well, to, to the point of the lineup with, with Doak in there as well, that's kind of why I either have Doak or Kessler in because you have them as a backside rebound uh, yeah. to help box out and rebound on, on the backside. That's that's why I kind of like that one because I didn't think it was going to work with Doak in there, but it actually did, and I kind of liked it. I like I said, and I, I he's such a he's a good rebound. I'd like to see that lineup some more, and then I'd like to see him flip Kessler in there too. It's like. I don't know. It's like they feel so obligated to get Vanderbilt back in the game. And when you can't put Vanderbilt at the two. So if you have those three in there, he's on the bench. But you know what? If we're blowing the other team up, then stick with it. Like I, I think I think we need to be in a position where <laughs> Vanderbilt comes off the bench as a three or a four. Not yes. a one or three, but you know what I'm saying? But a three or a four. We have um Kessler starting with Owen Lennox and, and, and Lowry. We have um Don't getting like maybe like five 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 to eight minutes behind Kessler at, at center. Not too many minutes. Um Vando being able to play that the three the three to four and the five, depending on who else is on the court. I think this that, that is a that is a way more versatile way to use the front court instead of the way that we're using the front court. There's no reason to just sit there and have um Vando, Vando, Lowry, and and um, Olin are going to court at the same time. It does not. It doesn't work. It's solid. It's so one you, of some games, but it's... so would you start Sexton, um, Clarkston, Marketing, Olenek, and Kessler? Yeah, I would. Here's what I would do. It, I would move, move, and then we can start, and we can move the rotations. Um, I like that. I would. I, like I, it. I would go Sexton, Beasley, Vando, Lowry. And Kessler, and then you got Olinick and Clarkson off the bench because they can just sit there and run the pick and roll and eat it alive. Uh, Beasley's better at, at coming off of a screen and shooting, but if I think if you run Clarkson with Olinick pick and roll, he can pick and pop, pick and roll, or C- Clarkson can just come off and go score. I think those two would eat second I'm units alive. To that point, I'm surprised Colin Sexton has doesn't run more pick and rolls with the big guys because like he's not great. He, he doesn't he know how to make pick reads. Pick IQ. He doesn't have pick and roll yeah. IQ. Well, that was coach's so, excuse. Like, well, well, but to, just further to that point, I, I wish he would get better in that because he he has that mid range that he can get to by himself, which props to him for being able to do so. But I think he'd be even more wide open and more dangerous if he was able to do it in a pick and roll. But that's just me. Because then he would have his his uh, roll option where he can just shoot it by himself. Or he'd get, you know, after he shoots it often enough, obviously the defense has to then go over and then he could have the die up option. I just wish he'd get better at that. That's just yeah. The thing with Sexton to me is that for me personally, Sexton is exactly who he is. I think he's only going to get a smidget better at a at, at the at reading the pick and roll, but this this is his game. It's not his game is a great game. It's a, it's a solid game. Like you can, that's he's valuable for damn near every team in the league. But um, at the same time, this is the best we're going to get. It's, it's just about subpar, not terrible defense. Just you know, just a little bit on the average defense. Defense. Um, we're, we're answer, terrible on defense. <laughs> you know, I'm talking about just him individually. Yeah, we're terrible on defense. But um, he's 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 subpar on defense. Uh, and high, highly energetic. He can he can get the ball. He can get the pace going. I think he's just a change of pace player. Like he, he can get some fouls for the second for the um for the second unit that the second unit won't be getting by themselves unless it's THT. But THT is not driving like that anymore. Um, yeah, I just think he's a second unit player. Yeah, it could be. I'm going to I'm going to get to comments real quick. Uh, we've got Calvin Howard. I know is on the East Coast. I think you requested to speak, but then it went away. So if you want to speak, uh request it again and and Dallin, you can um approve it, but let me get to these real quick. Uh Calvin says, "I think Doke and Kessler is situational. Doke against bigger and stronger centers. Kessler was getting beat by Vooch." Yeah, I I I agree. I think that as surprising it was that um, Doak played tonight, I thought he did good. I thought he did decent on uh, on Vooch. Olenek is the problem. I couldn't agree with you more. I agree with Armani. I couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> it needs to be Kessler or Doak. 
Uh, and then Abraham, I think Abraham's been in here. This is his first time. He says, bro, for real, we should let this loss get us because we should have expected this. Uh, not Wait, sure what? what I'm not sure what you mean by that. I, but I think, I think he's echoing what I've been saying is that the Jazz aren't that good of a team and we outplayed our, our weight in the first 12 games of the season. I think uh, he's getting that. I'm not. I'm not. I'm really not sure if that's actually it because yeah, that's not that's definitely it? not it. Let's I give think, Calvin the mic. Go for it. I think I think one thing that we have to look at is the team. We have a young coach, and we don't have a veteran, uh, a veteran point guard. We're in every single one of these games. It's not like we're going in and getting blown out. Like I just went through like the last ten games. There are spots in the last five minutes of the game that we are within three, four points in every game. So. I think a lot of this, we're talking about all of these things that we need to try differently. I think it really comes down to Will Hardy and then trying to find somebody who could actually run the point more effectively. And honestly, Jordan Clarkson probably does the best job at it right now. I, I, he does, I think he needs to tweak around with that lineup a little bit until Mike Conley gets back because all of these, all of these games are all clutch. Every single one of them, except for Golden State, have been lost in the clutch. So, Calvin, I, I'm going to push back a little bit because you can't tell me that the first half was completely different than the second half. You mean wasn't? Yeah, it wasn't. It, it, they weren't the same halves. We didn't play the same basketball or the, or the same rotations or lineup. Wait, uh, the mic cut off. Uh, I, I didn't hear what you said. What, what I said, that? I said, as much as I think it's a veteran point guard, I'll, I mean, I'll agree with that, that it, it is a point guard issue because we don't know who, like we have Sexton running it. We have Na running it. We have THT running it. Uh, we've got Jordan running it. Beasley has ran it. It's like, yeah, you go from Sexton being the consistent point guard, the first half. And then the second half, it's just like someone different, it felt like, was running it every time up the floor. So it's like, if, if you're going to have Jordan run it, I think he can run it. But does he know that he's supposed to run it? Like, I don't I don't think these guys know because the rotation's so messed up in the second half that, that none of it made sense. No, I, I really honestly think it's because of the fact that everybody believes this is an equal system, that that's a part of the issue. That could be. Yeah. Not that it's a problem, but it's, it's at the same time there's no um, hierarchy. The, the great, the, the greatest hierarchy we do we do have is everybody's trust in JC and Conley. <laughs> and and, and JC Conley and you know, Mike Beasley coming off of a, coming off a down screen. And to Calvin's point, you know, maybe this comes down to a rookie coach being out coached in the second half. You know, maybe he's not making the adjustments like some of these veteran coaches are. You know, I, I like Will Hardy a lot, and I think we give him a lot of credit for what he did in the first uh, 16 games of the season, but he, he still is a rookie coach. Um, he, well, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but he was only in a, a full assistant coach for one year in Boston, right? Yeah, right. yeah, I, yes. I can get on board with that because I even had that thought tonight, like, is, is Hardy letting the pressure get to him, especially with now five losses in a row? Is he starting to make bad decisions just because he feels that pressure so much? Um, because did he get, I, I think did he I, get away with it the first fifteen games because nobody knew about his system. No, I I think the first when he was winning, right? Like it's easier to make good decisions when things are going good, but then when things are going bad, like just think about your own life. Like when there's stress or something bad going on it's harder to have a clear mind and so that could be a very valid point that the other the other thing too is i'm sure he, there's no pressure on him from the front office to win whatsoever right like he, he basically has a blank check this season and so he's trying different things he's probably trying to find himself he's probably trying to figure out which stats he wants to watch you know which you know metrics he wants to believe i think he's experimenting because honestly, I don't think it matters if he wins or loses. I think the front office supports him. Yeah, I think that he is. For sure, for sure, for sure. He definitely is doing a lot of experimenting. But I think the other thing is the, the weakest position uh, in this entire lineup is the point guard. And 
we don't literally he's trying to make point guards who really aren't point guards, yeah. whether it's Law or THT or Colin Henderson, point guards. And that's the most important position when yeah. it comes to executing down the stretch. So I think that we're not between him not having Mike, who he admittedly leans on, and then you know, he's a rookie coach himself. I think half these games probably could have easily been won with Mike Conley. Injuries are a part of the game, but I think, I don't think we, we should be like, you know, everything's on fire and stuff like that. That's why I'm like, I'm not, I, me personally, I'm not upset or uh, I get into the game. It's kind of, you, you see those things that are happening. So. Yeah. And I think part of uh, the, the hard thing with the fan base is we won those first games. So to the casual fan, it's, it, it can be really confusing on what's going on. Uh, and, and it might've set an expectation that, Hey, we are a playoff team and, we're not. Um, I think I've fallen into that too, but I think the most exhausting thing for the fans is not knowing what is going on because how we started the season. Yeah. I want to ask Calvin a question only because he's been pushing back a lot on the tanking aspect of everything. And I understand why, I mean, as a fan, you don't want to watch your team lose. It's not fun, but um, I want to know what you think the uh, ceiling of this team is. Cause I think even with, Conley in the lineup I think that um we've been getting unlucky as of late late in the games but I feel like at the beginning of the season we also got pretty I mean pretty lucky I mean we seem to win every single close game so shots just kept falling at a at a rate or and even the contested shots were falling at a rate where these players aren't going to make that consistently so I'm just kind of gauging because I, I think that e- the ceiling even with Conley back is probably around 500 I just wanted to see what you thought I think um, ceiling is a uh, fringe home court. I think ceiling with Mike Conley is a first round win in the playoffs. Yeah, that, all, mm-hmm. all that depends on the uh, matchup. I, I personally like felt like before the season started that this was a 500 team or above 500. I think the maximum wins that we could get is about 46, maybe. And I feel like the 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 bottom we can possibly get if shit was really just just, just to go shit go if everything was just to go to shit with the same exact roster. I think at bare minimum we're gonna win maybe about thirty seven wins. I think it was gonna be five hundred. I mean, pretty much regardless, because you you got to look at uh, Laurie Markkinen. When's the last time he's played over seventy games? Mike Conley he played seventy two last year, but he has an injury filled history. And you take those two out of the equation, you're going to have real problems. So I, I always kind of felt that at best they were 500 because those injuries are coming. Well, I let's ask my let let's ask my two year old son what he thinks. Come here, bud. He just woke up. <laughs> what do you think is the ceiling of the Utah Jazz? What do you think? You don't know. You watched the game though. He's he's still a little. Exactly, I don't. He's still a little asleep. Fan base with that one. Well, I better end this because uh, my wife's coming home from working the jazz game. If she sees my kids are up, uh, I might not be alive tomorrow. So, um, (laughs) we'll we'll, never never hurt you. Yeah, but uh, I I, I burnt the I burnt the turkey on Thanksgiving, so I'm not on good terms right now. So uh, I'll. Thanks for hosting. Yeah, we'll see you guys again on Wednesday. We've got the Clippers at home. Luckily, we've got a six-game home stand. Uh, they they shared a pretty cool stat. We won't be out of our or we won't change time zones in the next twenty days. So I think we'll get a real feel for what this team is. Uh, maybe they're still a little tired, but personally, I'm back. I'm uh not back, but I'm on the tank. I, I think we're tanking. So. Um, appreciate you guys for tuning in, um, share it, rate it, comment it, whatever. And, uh, we will see you guys Wednesday. Thanks. That was loud sound, huh? Come here, bud.